This is obviously a significant change from traditional data center uh, infrastructure. Uh, what were the sort of questions that you needed to address, uh, barriers that you might have uh, had to consider uh, before you decided to adopt this? Well, obviously, when you come out and tell people you are going to immerse your servers in liquid, there is a bit of uh, hesitation as to how you are going to do that. And so the very first thing we had to do was to validate for ourselves and of course our users and managers that that actually was an idea that worked. So we did what we do with a lot of technologies. We went through a first uh, test phase where we had a small version of it um, loaned by GRC at the time and we validated all of the parameters of that, uh, that solution. First of all, obviously the efficiency but also the fact that you can actually do it and not have problems in installing, maintaining, and running all the systems. So once we were convinced that worked, then we started uh, the uh, industrial deployment of the solution. And as you can see in this room, there's quite a few of those tabs now. And they're all being used. They're all in, in production. That's one of the characteristics of CGG. We, um, we actually have to make money off of the solutions that we deploy. So it is not just a test or a proof of concept or some nice idea that we want to validate. It is actually something that we use every day for production to actually uh, deliver data to our customers. How is this facility different from a, a traditional uh, facility in terms of how you operate it and maintain it? Well, maintaining it, obviously, we had to develop uh, ways to cope with the fact that there's a liquid around the servers, so you have to drain them before you work on them, you have to uh, know what works and what doesn't work in terms of products, and, uh, and of course since it's, it's a, an oil-based liquid, you have to make sure that you're not going to stain everything around you, so we, and, and that you're not going to sleep on it, that you're not going to create issues basically linked to the fact that you're using a liquid. So over the uh, two years that we've, uh, we've had that technology in-house now, we have developed all of the necessary skills and tools and processes to be able to deal with it. Today, uh, there's really not much difference between managing this room and managing another traditional air-based computer. Uh, some of the differences though are, as you can see, because we're right in the middle of this room, and it is producing as, as we speak. Uh, there's no noise, almost no noise. Uh, the temperature is very uh, reasonable. There's no air draft. There's none of the things that you would normally associate with a very high density computer. So that makes for a much nicer environment overall for the, uh, for the uh, Unix and, uh, and system administrators. Now, uh, this room is uh, uses a raised floor. Uh, why did you use that approach and, and are there uh, other options in, in how you can deploy uh, this type of cooling product? There are definitely other options. The reason we ended up using a raised floor mainly was because we had that uh, computer room available. That's not the only computer room in this facility, but that's the oldest one. And as we were about to decommission it to uh, upgrade it, uh, we decided it would be a good opportunity for us to test that new uh, liquid environment and see how it would work. Um, and, and as it is, that's one of the less efficient air-cooled rooms we had. It's one of the oldest ones, as I said. So uh, that's where we could see the most difference between the air and liquid environment in terms of efficiency. But uh, if we had to start from scratch, you do not need a raised floor. You do not need any of the infrastructure that you would normally have in an air-based uh, environment. Indeed, you could start with a warehouse with a concrete slab and just run the pipes and the electricity to the tubs and that's about all we need to do. You could even go to the extreme of putting them out in the uh, car park if you wanted to um, because really they don't really care about what sort of environment you um, put them in. And in terms of the efficiency and resource usage, what has the use of these, uh, of these units uh, meant for your operation? Well again, what we are seeing is a significant saving in terms of, uh, of electricity. Um, I would say it's not impossible to go up to a factor of two. So you, you gain essentially 50% in electricity. Um, and if you were to use a warehouse instead of a computer room, there are probably further gains to be had 
I can't really quantify them because that's not what we've done, but we know that there is the potential of further improvement if you, uh, if you um, do not use a race floor and if you design an environment specifically for that. So essentially, that saved electricity for us. So you, you, you can view that in two different ways. Either you are going to reduce your bill, which is good, obviously, or, as you know, computer rooms have a fixed amount of cooling and electricity beyond which you have to reinvest to add transformers, UPS, cooling systems. So what that did for us basically was to allow us to better use what we already have in terms of how much equipment we can put within a given power and electrical envelope. And that's what we did here. We saturated the power envelope of this room by putting twice as many systems as we would normally have uh, if we had a, a normal air cool system. Great. Well, listen, thanks for uh, telling us a little bit about uh, your data center. Sure. That's a pleasure. Thank you.